Welcome to Facts in 5, a presentation of the Fruitkin Law Firm. We provide our clients with legal services in the areas of business law, asset and estate planning, bankruptcy, and litigation. The Fruitkin Law Firm has office locations in Phoenix and North Scottsdale. You can visit us on the web at www.fruitkinlaw.com. There are two federal tax systems that I want to tell you about. One is the federal income tax. We're all in that one. We earn money, do the calculations, and pay tax to the feds at whatever rate we end up in every year. But the other federal system is the gift and estate tax. We are not all in that one. Almost no one is, as a matter of fact. When the federal estate tax was invented way back when, it did cover most people. It was meant to, like the income tax. When a person died, his or her estate would pay up. There was an exempt amount, so the smallest estates were not taxed, but most were. The idea behind it was, like the income tax, that, would, that everyone would effectively support the federal needs for government programs. They added something to the estate tax to make it less painful for families. That something was the step-up in basis rule. It was an income tax break that went to the families who paid the estate tax. It works like this. If a person sells an asset at a profit, he or she pays income tax on the profit. In turn, the profit is the amount received from the buyer reduced by the seller's basis, usually the amount that the seller paid for the asset that was eventually sold. For example, if great-grandpa bought a commercial building in Phoenix for $70,000 in 1919 and then sold it for $100,000 in 1933, his profit would have been $30,000, subject to income tax. If great-grandpa didn't sell it but gave it to his son, grandpa, the giver's basis would carry over to the recipient. So a lifetime gift resulted in a so-called carryover basis, and if the son sold at the same price as the father would have, the tax would be the same. But if great-grandpa died owning the property, two things would happen. One, the property would be in his taxable estate for estate tax purposes, and two, when his son received the building from the estate, he, the son, would get a stepped-up basis stepped up to the fair market value of the building at the time of the father's death. So the son could immediately sell the property for $100,000, if that was the amount includable in the estate, and report no taxable income whatsoever. Why was it set up that way? Because it was thought that with almost all families paying federal estate tax, they should get the income tax break provided by the step up in basis rule. Times have changed. Almost no U.S. estates are subject to the federal estate tax anymore. That is because there is an exemption from the tax for each person that dies in the amount of $5,250,000. In other words, a married couple with $10.5 million can leave it all to their descendants without any federal tax at all, since the estate of each of them can claim the $5 million plus exemption. In fact, the latest estimate is that about three-tenths of one percent of all American families will end up paying an estate tax, not a part at all of the government's revenue-raising effort that we hear about. Yet at the same time, the step-up in basis at death rule remains in place. It used to be a kind of makeup for those who had to pay the estate, the estate tax, no longer. It's a huge so-called tax expenditure that goes to everyone, even though almost no one pays the estate tax any longer. Will our guys in Washington fix it? What do you think? Facts in Five was brought to you by the Fruitkin Law Firm. Facts in Five is a series of short, general, informational presentations for the public. This is not legal advice. You should contact an attorney with specific questions regarding your particular situation. For more information, visit us on the web at www.fruitkinlaw.com.